Oh, well, hello, everybody. It's the Poke Bears podcast. There are some bears rumbling in the woods or maybe in the Arctic circles of America. That's where you find a bear, a tick, or an Ursa ring. Not in the relevant order of which I said them. Little bit of a disclaimer for this episode. If you hear a little bit of construction, that's my apartment complex doing construction. Hey there, Forrest. Hello, Nick. How you doing today? I'm pretty good. Well, that's good. Good. That's good. So like Nick said, there is construction going on outside. There's not a lot we can do about it, and I didn't want to reschedule the podcast, so... Sorry. Yeah. Realistically, it's their problem, not ours, so... That is... <laughs> we, well, yeah. I mean, I'm going to have to edit around it later, but... But, like, in the, in the car, like, maybe they'll be like, Ah! My favorite <laughs> podcast is being ruined by construction! And then they cause an entire highway accident. That, that... Would we, would we be liable for that? Nah. Okay. Okay. Nah, so there. everyone drive responsibly. Don't let your anger <laughs> take too much control of you. Exactly. All right, are you ready to talk about these episodes of the anime, Nick? I am. I'm excited for these. Yay! Um, so we're starting to get to near the end of what's on Netflix. Yeah. And Netflix, we're noticing, has some episodes being weird with what they have on them for the first season, at least. Um, so, yeah. It's going to be an interesting little adventure yeah. as we go through. We discovered with yeah. uh, one of the episodes. We'll be fine. Uh, we'll be fine so far. But well, there's a uh, there's one episode on here that's actually out of order, but it's, but it was out of order in like the um, in the original release of the yeah. podcast, which is weird. Well, that's not but this episode. That's the not first, this episode. The first episode of our podcast today is episode number forty nine. A, a chancy operation. operation. Yay! Yay! So this episode cuts right away to the meat of it. With yeah, no Pikachu, narrator. Yeah, with Pikachu in a tree, I guess, eating an apple, and he tried to eat the whole fucking apple on one bite. And so we just see chewing. Pikachu, like, suddenly shudder and faint. And then the narrator comes in. Yeah. Saying, but our heroes don't know that there's no Pokemon Center for some damn reason when there's a Pokemon Center just yeah. about everywhere else. There's Pokemon centers like in the middle of nowhere with no one around for miles, but there's no Pokemon center in a city. Like, why? To be fair, this is a really sparsely populated city. The Ash and Company don't see anyone. Yeah. Throughout the city. And at the hospital that they go to, he, he's like the only guy there. Oh wait, I wanted to point out. I wanted to point out that um, when Misty tells Ash. That Pikachu has something in his throat. Oh, Ash's CPR? A yeah, Ash's, Ash's version of CPR is to hold Pikachu upside down and to violently shake him while he's upside down. I think that was the way you used to do CPR to babies back in, like, when CPR wasn't Isn't that how you get shaken baby yet. syndrome? Uh, yeah, but I it, you either get shaken baby syndrome or you get choked baby syndrome. Okay, for... for for the information of everyone listening to this podcast, if you have a small animal or a child or a small child or a baby with something stuck in his throat, you just kind of reach in and grab it. Yeah. Especially if you can see it. Put it, like, rest it on your forearm and then take two fingers. Make sure they're sanitized or have gloves in them if possible. And then kind of just reach in swap and in. grab it if you can. Yeah. Um, for the love of all that is good and right in this world, do not shake whatever child or animal you have or at least not upside down please please do not shake it so anyway they take pikachu to a people doctor and the people doctor's like ah i'm on my break F you yeah. i'm dr proctor yes it's the best doctor name but it is a people hospital so shut up he is he's also like a weirdly like handsome doctor with like a very like masculine like action movie star well, voice like he's he's basically the one very not john stamos from er but the other pretty guy from er who also is like brock and hits on every woman he sees yeah and he's also and kind of misty. crappy about like like he's the only doctor in this hospital for some reason like there aren't any other nurses or anyone else like even a janitor like why does he hospital? think he could be on break when there's no one else there yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, everyone in this sick is gonna have to be put on hold. And the kids come up and be like, "Hey, can you help us? Just an emergency." And he's like, "Ah, that's not Yeah, okay, sure, whatever. Yeah, it's like, why should children have to plead with you if there's an emergency? You terrible doctor. And why do they have to help you with the operation? Exactly. And why is it that when the the 12, 13 year old girl or whatever is like, hey, please help me. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to help, help you. you out. With my. <laughs> oh, God, that got dark. <laughs> that got dark. That's so what he implied. <laughs> Those are the implications. Oh, God. I'm only following what the episode is showing That's me. That's so awful. That is so awful. Oh, I'll always help a little girl in need. If you know what I mean. So the doctor helps out Pikachu by doing. The actually kind of correct thing and putting, like, reaching, he looks into Pikachu, sees the apple, reaches his whole g hand. Yeah, that, that's the throat. one. Yeah. You don't grab your whole hand unless you have, like, a snake jaw and can unhinge it. Like and that. he pulls out a Because the animation is very disturbing. Yes. He pulls out a full apple from Nick. From Nick. From, 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 my, from my throat. He reached into reality. <laughs> it was that shocking, folks. It was pretty shocking. Especially since Pikachu it's an shocked type. him. Yeah, I'm going to stop you from that Okay, pun. great. No puns. So after after he fixes up Pikachu and Pikachu's all good to go, the telephone rings and... Or the, I guess, like the video telephone rings. Did whatever they use for communication for rings. Communication rings. And the doctor is basically like, ah, f*** the telephone, I'm off duty. And Ash and company are like, dude, what if it's an emergency? Like, someone could be dying. You need to help them. Well, You're I'm the on my break. You're the only doctor in this hospital. Help S people. See, if they just made the hospital, like, more of, like, a private clinic or something, that would make yeah, more sense. Yeah, that would make sense. Be like, he's just, he just happens to have a private practice. Maybe there's another hospital down the road. But no, the implication is that his, is he is the, the only medical facility for miles. Very poorly run hospital yeah, anyway, nah, nah. since he's the only one there, but. But then they get the emergency of, like, there's been an accident involving Pokemon, of mm -hmm. course. Uh, a car accident. And there aren't people. No, no, no. The pe none of the people have to go to the hospital. It's only the Pokemon that don't have enough room for a Pokemon Center. It's weird that, like, the car accident was bad enough for, like, Pokemon to be gravely injured. But Jesse and James, who it's implied was also in the accident, are totally fine. Which, by the way, I like that. Like, we saw Jesse and James for the first time mid scheme yeah you didn't see them planning out it was like we were in the middle of something and it failed ah that was cool yeah and now like that little bit of story changing yeah and now they're like actually a part of the story mm -hmm. because they were the ones that were involved in the car accident so their pokemon are some of the pokemon that are hurt and they're also some of the only people around for some reason who can help uh save the day in the pokemon because like you mentioned earlier dr proctor um, Dr. A.K.A. Proctor. Dr. Sleazebag, because he hits on him everything. <laughs> hey, Nurse Joy, after uh, I get done helping all these people, you want to go out for pizza oh, with me? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, it's like, Nurse Joy is panicking about all these Pokemon, and then he says, oh, yeah, yeah, let's go out for pizza after. <laughs> now is not the time, Doctor. <laughs> I just had a Voltorb explode and shot my it shot a Nidal King's arm off, Okay. <laughs> Oh, okay, let's... Can we focus? Violence. But he enlists uh, the help of uh, Ash and company, Ash, Brock, and Misty, and Pikachu, assembly, and also uh, Jesse and James, when they get there. So does he pay them, a, like, doctor nope. fees? No. He doesn't pay them. It's just child-free child labor. Huh. It's just, you know... Good old-fashioned child exactly. labor. Exactly. You find some children, and they'll, oh, come in. Come You're in. wrapping a cast, motherfucker. Yeah, like, uh, help on. out. You know, help it's out. the good thing to do. Yeah. God forbid I do this by myself. I'm a goddamn doctor. <laughs> Funny that this people doctor just like knows how knows, to treat yeah, Pokemon. Yeah, like I don't think real doctors are that good at treating animals. I like mean, I've never tw twisted my own arm into a literal knot. So, <laughs> thank God. <laughs> so I don't know horrifying. if a doctor would know how to operate on that. <laughs> it's good that there are doctors out there who have that knowledge. I guess though. That is good. Yeah. Good, 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 good. Team Rock is actually, like, genuinely concerned for the Pokemon. Meowth is in the background for, like, this entire episode because he lost the charm on his head. And he's like, ah, my charm, my charm. Which, yeah, that, I mean, that's kind of horrifying yeah, for you. Yeah, it would be. If, especially since, like, I think it's supposed to be part of his face. So it, I guess it'd be like if he lost his horn or something. Yeah. 
And uh, he's crying about the whole episode, but he's not super annoying, which is nice. He's just in the background, and he repeats, but, but it's, he's like, not like, it's understandable. Yeah, and he's not like, me! He just cries, yeah. and it's sad. Uh, there was a um, which Pokemon Cubone was injured, and was Ash it out Bulbasaur. I don't know, but... Injured because it was just crying. It was just it crying. Didn't... It was young. Bash sends out Bulbasaur, and it's like, hold it down with your vines, and then Bulbasaur, like, ah, holds it down, and B- Dr. Proctor's like, hey, You can't man. be so violent with the patients. Yeah, don't like, be so violent with your patients, man. You have child. to be nice, yeah. I'll get back to something here in a minute, but <laughs> to point something out. But anyway, so, like, okay, we gotta, we gotta. Oh, eventually... and wait, hold on. And then we see an x-ray of Cubone's body. And oh, now we yes, know for yes. sure that Cubone's face Fits its skull. So now we know that Pikachu f***ed up that Cubone back yes. in, like, episode 8. Yes, he did. Uh, we're referring to, if you've been keeping up, the School of Hard Knocks when Pikachu got him snapped that poor Cubone's neck all Twisting the way around. Twisting its head multiple times. We're going to keep coming back to that, man. That is just, that was horrifying. That's one of the most brutal Pokemon scenes, when you think about it. It, it really is. He snapped that guy thing's neck like it was candy. <laughs> So initially, Ash and company don't want to help out Team Rocket because they're like, hey, they're bad guys. And the doctor's like, hey, man, I got to help out everybody. It's not my place. His li- his actual line is, a doctor's job is to heal, not to judge, which I thought was good. Yeah. Put some morals into the Pokemon show. And I'm, I was actually surprised that Ash didn't want to help Team Rocket at all. Like, look at their Pokemon. They yeah. are obviously injured. Yeah. I mean, he was willing to save them in the Porygon episode, but here he's like, ah, f*** them. Uh, we'll just let them... To have permanent scar tissue damage. Yeah. No, Ashley, help, help him out. If you're going to help him out once, well, always help him out. They heal the Team Rocket, and of course they end up not being trustworthy and everything. Right. But they have this whole montage of them helping out the other Pokemon, which was kind of cute and nice. And then there's like one of them like where Chansey just, with a smile beats, on its face, beats, beats the beats. shit out of me out to keep it from crying or whatever. Ignoring Dr. Proctor's advice. <laughs> to, to heal, not judge, and also be nice and don't be so violent to your patients well this meowth it's okay but that's because it's meowth it, it was it was a like a, this whole abbott and costello scene where he's like i lost my charm please help me and chancy gets like a police like phone booth a police whatever. phone booth a venonat yeah. like just a whole bunch of different things other i'm sure other puns that would make more sense in japanese but you know we're not japanese we didn't but they're also just funny in their images of un it uh, kind of was taking away from the story a bit, but whatever. Like I, th- I didn't think it took away from the story. I think it was just, uh, hey, here's one of the repercussions with uh, Meowth <laughs> in this car accident. Yeah. But And this is the first time they've used this transition slate. Oh, yeah, where they, um, every time there's a transition, they transition to, like, another scene in the episode. There's, like, this little, like, image of Pokemon, like, Like, with an orange background, like, yeah, like, meanwhile, da 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 I, I think this is only the episode we see it in. It is, so far. 49 episodes in. <laughs> oh, uh, I also want to say, after Chansey slaps Meowth and gets him to shop for a second, she just puts a band-aid over the little hole like, where, his, slaps sla- it. where his charm was. And it's like, there you go. That good as new. So at one point, Dr. Proctor has to... He had to... To a Dodrio. An a Dodrio, that was it. Because the Dodrio, all three of its necks were like twisted into a big knot. Well, that's a naughty problem. <laughs> it was also a horrifying problem. Because, <laughs> my God, if you were actually that Pokemon, you would be cracking your neck every time you moved. And by the way, that pun was allowed because it was directly from the show. Which is f***ed up. <laughs> You can't be that casual about it when a Pokemon is suffocating three times. Like if, like imagine if someone walked into a doctor's office and he was like, "I was just a car accident." Well, I guess he wouldn't walk, but he was caught, pulled into a doctor's office on a stretcher. He's like, "I was in a car accident. My neck is like broken." He's like, "Oh, that looks like a real pain in the neck." <laughs> You're like, "Fuck you, doctor. Heal me." I can't laugh. There's blood in my throat. <laughs> so he um. He, he goes to give him anesthesia anyway. The Dodrio. And the Dodrio is angry, because yeah. rightfully so. Yeah, because it used a pun. Cause Doctor while Doctor, it is suffering. <laughs> yes, because Dr. Proctor used a pun while it was suffering. And you know, it goes into Dr. Proctor's arm. And um, this is another Netflix's shitty subtitles thing. Because we still have the subtitles on for some reason. But what the doctor says is, oh boy, that's not good. But what the subtitles say is, oh boy, that's good. <laughs> I've all, I've been looking for an excuse to hit hit up. <laughs> Here it is. 
So Dr. Proctor's like, all right, I'm going to be out for a bit. You guys have fun. So now the hospital's being run by children. Yep, because it wasn't before. And uh, Team Rocket's like, all right, well, now's our chance to be <laughs> evil. Yeah, to be dicks again. And we're going to steal all the Pokemon here. And they send out the trolley, the little, like, stretchers. The the stretcher, yeah, TK, I just wrote TR stretchers. Stretcher catchers, I think. Stretcher catchers. Yeah, it was so, so confusing. Did they plan to be at a hospital? Is the car did accident they, on purpose? Or did they just always, like, have these on standby? Do they always have, like, stretchers with arms going out of them just in case they need what them? What is the Team Rocket budget? Did they, like, like, did they, like, put these together in the last, like, ten minutes while everyone else was helping take care of the Pokemon? That's the most plausible one, I would say. And that's still pretty absurd. I don't know, it was... Like, they must have figured, oh, well, Weezing and Arbok are fine, so now we can like, just focus on it was, capturing the Pokemon. It was interesting seeing them, like, help out mm-hmm. uh, uh, Ash and Misty and Brock, like, take care of the Pokemon for a little bit. I kind of enjoyed that. Did you find it kind of weird that Misty and Jesse had to wear nurses' outfits, and then Brock, James, and Ash kind of just wear doctor suits over them? Just kind of like a coat, lab coat a over lab them? A lab coat, yeah. Yeah, that was a little mild sexism, I guess, but... Yeah. We'll let it, we'll let it slide. There's other, there's more pressing <laughs> there's issues. More, there's more pressing issues. Sexism will always be there. We yeah. know that. This is before the 2000s, so just you, you kind of have to just grin your <sighs> grit your teeth and bear it. Yeah, exactly. So the, but then the doctor wakes up because he's in the nick he's of time. So used to the anesthetic, uh, it barely has an effect on him yeah, at this he's, point. He's like, all right, that was a five minute uh, uh, <sighs> high, so I'm good now. Yeah, there we go. I'm, I'm awake coming. now. <laughs> so then he threatens to stab Team Rocket multiple times with needles and scalpels and like check out my all. arsenal. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, this got a little dark. <laughs> I can kill you just as well as I can heal you. Yeah. So uh, they they throw the stretchers back at Team Rocket, and they go away. And but they manage to steal a Voltorb. They do. Yeah. But uh, they also just ran straight through a wall. They did. All cartoony, like. And the Voltorb explodes, and then they get blasted off. They land, and they happen to land directly on top of Meowth's charm. I thought Meowth's charm. I thought that scene just revealed that Meowth's charm was inside of its head the entire time. Oh, I wasn't sure. Um, Maybe it was. Because I, I thought it, like, popped out. Of Maybe it Meowth's did. Head. I didn't. I might have blinked and missed a couple frames of it. Oh, yeah, nah, nah. That's what happened. Okay. Well, that's that's uh, that's interesting biology on Meowth's part then. So his head is soft enough that like a ch- like a charm that's as big as most of his face could just could pluck itself in, in. Can go inside of it. That's. I mean, probably. It's a normal yeah. type. It, it's yeah, got like a. It, it's got fur. It's got a lot of skin to probably keep it warm. Jesus. How does this episode like end? Um, it's pretty much it. Does he just for like, Team Rocket, and then the th- the rest of the cast is like, you could all be doctors someday, and then Nash is like, say, S- you, I'm going to be a Pokemon <laughs> Master. And Brock says, S- you, I'm going to be a Pokemon Breeder, except I will be a Pokemon Doctor, but that's not until like, the end of the Shino season, so whatever. And then Missy says, well, I could be, because I have a huge-ass ego, but I need to learn some things about water Pokemon, which nothing has been added to since first generation, so there's really nothing to learn. So that was that episode. How'd you feel about it, Nick? Yeah, I gave it three. You gave it three? I gave it three because the plot itself did not make me hate it. Yeah. And, and But I'm not giving it a four because, like, nothing, like, amazing happened with yeah. it. Yeah. I didn't find anything much substantial in this episode. They, they present some, like, good moral stuff about, like, helping others in spite of them being Knowing good or bad. That On the other hand, at the very end of the episode, he's like, I'm gonna f- stab you with needles if you try anything so there's also that he had healed them by that point so he, he did. was allowed to do whatever he wanted he did by um, his own code yeah it was it was interesting seeing team rocket and ash and company kind of team up together to help save the day but you know then team rocket was kind of has to ruin it had to kind of ruin it at the end i gave it two and a half old i didn't i didn't really like it but i didn't find a whole lot about it to dislike if that makes sense yeah i hear you on that yeah the plot was the plot was a little slow i felt because they just kind of they ran out of stuff to do so they had to do like little 
montages. Of... Little montages and just have, like, a bit between Chansey and Meowth for, like, well, that's kind of what I liked about it, though. It was, like, a whole bunch of different... Like, we saw a bunch of different Pokemon being treated in different right. ways. Right. Um, and Meowth included in that. Yeah. And Team Rocket didn't have... If they hadn't done their stretcher catcher, like, last minute we're gonna try and steal Pokemon thing, they wouldn't have had... They would have just been there just to help out... Which they the were there, though, but... to steal Pokemon. They were, yeah. That's they how they were. got there in the first place. Yeah, but I, I, it's 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 okay. I wouldn't say don't... I wouldn't say necessarily you would have to skip it if you're trying to watch all the episodes, but don't go out of your way to see it either, if that makes sense. I mean, it's on Netflix, so yeah. might as well see it. Yeah, if you're going to binge on all the episodes, don't stop your binging just to skip it, but... And I, I, I argue don't skip episodes. Like, mm. what... It's Even Pokemon. the bad there ones, are yeah. filler episodes. Yeah, oh yeah, totally, totally. Like, if you're trying to do an, a filler-free Naruto, good luck with that. Um, <laughs> or a One Piece, yeah, sure, because the main story is very different right. from filler. Oh, no, yeah, completely. But Pokemon's filler is Pokemon. Right. I'm just saying, like, I don't know, I'm gonna I'm gonna say, assuming that you've already gone through and watched the whole series, if you're gonna go back and I watch see. it, I'd say you maybe could skip this one, but... But if you're like, it's not part whatever. of the highlights. Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. Gotcha. So this next episode, on the other hand... Episode 50, a very good marker for 50. Holy matrimony! Holy matrimony indeed. <laughs> so this episode is all about... James. Of all things, it is about Team Rocket. Yeah, James. Like, actually, Ash and Company are the side characters in this one. Mm-hmm. And I never thought that, like, I would enjoy a Team Rocket-centered episode on anything. Honestly, I think anything where Team Rocket is has a different role than they usually do is almost always a good episode. Yeah, well, it, that's because, like, when they're used as a part of the story instead of just a mechanic for the story. Like, instead of just being, like, the second act of the story. They, were, they are, like, actual people that yeah, yeah, talk they're, to. Yeah, yeah. They're characters imagine that like these are people with dilemmas that and they have like stories and backstories and all that kind of shit. so and now we get to see that exactly so apparently james was rich as a child mm -hmm. and uh he's been missing because we see a wanted poster for james wow so his parents haven't seen him since he was like a little kid i guess for like 10 years roughly probably about yeah wow they they're so <laughs> they are shitty. <laughs> so it's kind of weird that, like, to the normal person, you're not gonna see, you're not gonna find a kid who's been missing for ten years, mm -hmm. because, well, they're a kid and they've been missing for ten years. Um, you don't really hear cases of finding them again unless they've been trapped in an underground vault for something for fifteen years, like a room situation. So what you're saying is. They're hopeful to get him back? I, I guess so, but overly hopeful. Overly hopeful? Yeah, it, he's been gone for a while. Like, the kid in the poster is a kid, and James is obviously not a kid. He is obviously, like... Youngest is 15. Youngest is 15. I, I always assumed that, like, Team Rocket was around 18, 20, like, oh, in that range. I think in the Bulbapedia it says they're 15. Really? Yeah. I always assumed they were a little bit older than that. Well, that's Japan, so everyone in, the, in their Looks animes. like an adult. So I don't have any notes about this until they get to the mansion, but what happens is they, Ash and company have fucking amazing timing because they're looking at this poster and up drives the limousine, uh, the butler, <laughs> the fucking family butler at that exact moment is like, hey, have you seen this guy? And they're like, yeah, that's James from Team Rocket, obviously. We see him every goddamn day. Whoa! It's like you have some sort of magical ability to be at the perfect twice at the perfect time in every episode, in every encounter that someone would focus <laughs> in on you on. Do you happen to go into a town what, the day they're having a contest? Well, yeah. Pretty we much do. every time, yeah. yeah. That's kind of how we enter contests, is we just kind of show up and they're like, oh, it's contest day, obviously, right? Yeah. yeah. Hell, we even threw one for no reason. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> the butler takes the action company to James's mansion, and they're like, wow, this is a really big mansion. And they're like, oh, no, that's the that's just the doghouse. Yeah, don't you insult my mansion yeah. with that. This is the mansion, motherfucker. And they look around. And look it's like, to their left. And it's like twice as big. Why didn't they see that before? I don't know. Maybe they were just like, maybe they were just 
looking enamored, enamored completely out the right side of the window, and they were not going to turn their <laughs> heads at all. I mean, that roof is so blue, though. <laughs> and meanwhile, Team Rocket sees them, and one would think, ah, oh, darn it, Team Rocket, don't just do your normal Team Rocket thing where you follow them. But no, no, it's a good thing that they follow them. Yeah, it is. James is, like, kind of conflicted because, like... He doesn't want to go back. He doesn't want to go back, and they're like, dude, uh, why not? This is, These people are rich. This is your family? He's like, yeah, they're, they're rich. And then they take, uh, the butler takes Ashton Company inside and reveals that James's parents had died that morning. Waiting for James. They were so yeah. heartbroken. So. And uh, James takes his uh, parents' he's theoretical death pretty Very, casually. very well, yeah. He's just like, in fact, if anything, he's still nervous. About, and, like, just showing up there. Yeah. And uh, so the butler tells them, I thought this, I found this kind of amusing. The butler tells them, if James doesn't marry this girl by... 24 hours within, within 24 his parents hours of the parents dying, the entire estate is going to go to charity. And Ash... God forbid. I know. And Ash and company was like, oh, well, we got to help James get married so that he can get the estate. <laughs> I'm like, motherfucker, that's like so much money going to charity. Well, hold on, though. If James is busy in an estate, there's half of Team Rocket gone free already. Oh my god, this is such a dilemma. <laughs> this is such a dilemma. <laughs> Giant mansion for charity? Be annoyed every episode by one less person. That is, that is a genuine dilemma. Alright, okay, I'll, I'll give them a little bit more credit. Okay, well there done. We go. Well said, well said. So Jesse and me out there like, Motherfucker James? Motherfucker James, get your god <laughs> money! Marry this bitch! We could have so much money, James. So much money because we're Imagine all... all the giant robots we can make! <laughs> we can make so many tickle machines! So many stretcher catchers! So much stuff, We James. can pay off our debts to the balloon company! <laughs> right? <laughs> we bought so many balloons from them. All of our loans, we could get it all paid off, James. Come on! And James is like, no, dude, you don't understand. Like, You I don't, don't understand. You don't understand. A little boy, ten years ago, ran away from his home and died. <laughs> But then Misty points out, but but you're still here. By the way, M Misty and the gang have seen them, so yeah, at this point. they're now interacting with each other. So Misty says, but you're still here, and James is like, oh yeah. James is like, oh, I, I don't know, I'm confused. I have amnesia. The, it's such interesting like stuff that they said with James in this episode. <laughs> he's like, because he's like he's like playing that he has amnesia and he's so conflicted, like. Actually, there's like inner toil this or turmoil that's coming out. There's actual character stuff going on. With Team Rocket of all people, mm -hmm. oh my god! Mm -hmm. So Jesse and uh, Meow are like, okay, well we're gonna dress up like all in black uh, and guide James into the like house. the puppeteers Tie him up, from yeah. uh, Puppet Theater. Yeah, <laughs> just voice for James saying, "I've come to collect my money. I mean, more than my parents." <laughs> Jesse and her saying James is hilarious because <laughs> he's actually not too bad at it. Oh no, I mean you spend enough time with the guy, yeah, and his voice is higher pitched relatively. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so then it turns out that then his parents aren't dead. They're just really fucked up because <laughs> they had they look like put coffins into the mansion and everything. <laughs> they hid inside it and waited until James was there. They could have not showed up. Yeah, they could have just entirely. It could have listened to James and been like, "Oh, okay, James, if you don't want to go, you don't have to go." No, no. J they pop out of the coffins. They're like, "Oh, James, you are back." Oh, yes, James, you're back. And they're typical rich people voices. Yes, like, she's like a southern belle, and he's like, oh, I'm so snobby. Oh, I'm a British person. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> they do look cool, though. Yeah. Like, that mustache on James's dad? God damn. Dude, they're, they're actually, their design is so fun. Because, like, she's, like, inspired from Gone with the Wind, and he's just, like, the most rich, upper-crust, gentlemanly type person <laughs> that you can imagine. <laughs> it's so great. So they, um, I'm not sure why this was, like, anyway, they took him upstairs, and they're like, okay, here's your fiancé waiting in. With, with Jesse and Meowth still. Yeah. Guiding James. They're completely ignoring Jesse and Meowth, like, they don't know they're there, which is kind of weird. And even Misty and Ash are asking about it, like. Yeah, they're like, dude, why are they, like, do they not see Jess, Jesse and Meowth? Like, what's going on? This is really weird. Like, they are standing out. They're in black, not yeah. red. Yeah. Like, this is so bizarre. And they take him upstairs, and they reveal James's fiancé. Jessabelle! Jessabelle! 
who for some reason is like a Jesse clone. I don't know. Uh, yeah, pretty it's, much. Yeah, I mean, I can understand like the uh, story. Why I can understand from like a storytelling perspective why that would be a thing, mm-hmm. but in terms of um, in terms of like the logistics of the plot, I'm not sure why that was a thing because they kind of set a they make it kind of like a reveal of like a two minute reveal that Jesse Bell like yeah, reminds him so much of Jesse. Of Team Rocket. I mean, they did talk about how all the Nurse Joys and all the Officer Journeys look alike. Yeah, yeah. So, it is... So, duplicates are a very real thing. Mm. Doppelgangers are just all over the place. Doppelgangers, that's yeah. the word I was looking for. Yeah. Are a very real thing in the Pokemon world. Yeah. I mean, from a storytelling perspective, I like it. But mm. from, like, a plot... from As, like, a plot point perspective, I wasn't sure if, like, it, it was supposed to be more meaningful. Um, Did I, that make sense? It probably just... Helps explain Je- Jesse's relationship with James. Yeah. yeah, like James is comfortable with Jesse because she reminds him of, ooh, a person who f- expressed feelings for me, but who lacks the annoying, uh, you got to be more refined personality. Yeah. yeah. Whereas this Jesse wants to change me and make me into something I'm not. This Jesse accepts me for everything that I am. She yells at me still, but like, yeah, it's, but... It's, it's all in good. L- <laughs> it's fun. all in good fun. <laughs> We are friends. They take James, um, and Ash and company are following still. For to some reason. gentleman training. Oh my god, they, it's like a f***ing SNN dungeon it or something down there. It is a torture. It's a torture porn dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> they got chains, giant, like, It's like a gymnasium. Sites. Yeah. And, uh, God <laughs> Jesse Bell has a <laughs> whip, and she is ready to crank that <laughs> mother <laughs> And, and the, when she cracks that whip, are like playing like Japanese music in the background. <laughs> yep. And when she cracks that whip, she like destroys like furniture, of wood, and furniture, and I'm like, oh my god, this got so fucked up really fast. Oh, and now we know that the parents do see Jesse and Meow. Yeah, they were just like, yeah, we're just totally choosing to ignore them because we're not retarded. We just like, wanted you down here too. We just wanted you down here too, so we can kill you with these yeah. very intricate uh, traps. Um, do they explain why exactly it was so important for them to for him to marry Jezebel for them? Uh, I think they just wanted Jezebel, who is like them, a very cultured, rich Southern Belle type. They basically want so they her just part wanted of the her family. to be part of the family Probably. and to teach James exactly. That. And my guess, and my guess is also uh, it's a money thing. It's Get a money thing. Money. Yeah, marry into more money. They want to continue the line. Yeah, so it all makes sense. Jesse ha- or Jezebel has a nice butt, which implies <laughs> childbearing genes. Um, so Jezebel brings out Vileplume, her her Pokemon, and it uses like sleep powder to knock them all out. Is uh, that right? Sleep powder stuns for one of the yeah. two. Oh, wait, I want to say this line. Go for it. Um, So Jezebel says to James, like, I'm going to make you a gentleman. Even if it destroys us. <laughs> what? Why would it destroy you? What are you going to do to yourself? Do you do you rig yourself up to these things in the basement? Oh my god. It's great. It's so it's it's actually very very amusing <laughs> if I'm honest. Like it's kind of messed up. It's it's really kind of messed up and kind of horrifying, but it's meant to be horrifying, which I so I'll excuse it. Like yeah, no, it's it's <laughs> great. It's a great scene. Je- yeah, James is running for his life, and she's like cracking the whip at him. Um, so after they t- uh, knock everyone out, they get uh, Jesse and Ash and company out of the building, and they leave Je- James and Jezebel inside. And Jezebel's like af- chasing at. We can hear them like chasing after James. James being inside. tortured. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, it's so great. The rest of the crew uh, hangs out at uh, Growly's mm-hmm. house, and Growl- Growly is uh, James's Growlithe that uh, he had as a child. They they show the very important bond that they that he had with Growlithe, and and we see like the relationship they have with each other. And Growlithe is gonna do anything they can that it can to help James. So when they hear that Growlithe is inside, Growlithe like, is James's Pikachu. Yeah, exactly. They hear Growlithe inside the house, and they're so they go inside to meet with Growlithe. By all linking up because the door is locked. So that's how you open a door. <laughs> that's locked. Man. You just hope that the fire dog is able to knock through on the other side as well. <laughs> Which it does. So uh, Growlithe, I think they just meet up with Growlithe and they, does James somehow get out? They were in the basement. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. They he were in jumps the basement. Out of, that's it. He jumps out of the window uh, with Growlithe, right? Because Growlithe goes with him. Yeah. Goes to get him. 
and then he jumps out through the window and then then James explains that like oh no the the real backstory isn't that I is that um isn't that I just ran away from myself I it's, I ran away from Jezebel yeah because that girl is up and, and she was trying to change me man and i didn't want to change i didn't like the t- person that my parents were trying to make me to be by the way i like this flashback because do you know what pokemon <laughs> jezebel has as a as a child as a child it's it's an oddish <laughs> it's an oddish erica <laughs> maybe i don't know evolve your pokemon instead of just having a gloom as a child and then keeping it as a gloom forever forever no the the pokemon grows with them um, and when James isn't around, Growlithe stays a Growlithe. Because it's, Growlithe it's, isn't going to have a fire stone that expose it to. Yeah. yeah. But also, like, it it stays there. Like, the Growlithe is, a, is stationary. It doesn't change when James isn't around because it's that part of his life. Yeah. He has that bond with Growlithe, but, like, it can't change with him because he's not with it. That's the part that he has to leave behind in order to do this. In God, order to Growly. move on, do the things he needs to do for himself. God, Growly, I love you. <laughs> I love you, Growly. <laughs> So it's it's pretty it's pretty great. Um, so Growlithe uh, attacks Jezebel and Vileplume and sends them away with Pikachu's help. With with Pikachu's help, but it's mostly James. Yeah, it's mostly, Pikachu is kind of like the Goku of the Pokemon anime. Always interf- <laughs> He always has to be the one that does any, everything, even if it's someone else's story. Right. But anyway, so chases them away. So he chases them away, and Jezebel just runs off leaving yeah. bioplume by <laughs> himself yeah um the james's parents are like feeding uh their pet magikarp and like oh it's so great to be rich isn't it can't wait for jezebel to be one of us and then she knocks them into the river <laughs> and they're like ah shit, this is some fucking bullshit. oh i guess she's too good for our son james yep and james uh then james has to leave behind growth again and it's, like he says his goodbye and I was about to cry. <laughs> I had teary eyes. Yeah. If it wasn't for James suddenly doing the Ronin the lone Ronin thing, uh huh, I would have cried. He he like trans James like transforms his clothes into like a into like the lone Ronin warrior and leaves in such like a and, and it, a beautifully it silly It so fits his personality and like the show in general. It's just it's perfect. Yeah. <sighs> so he leaves and then he meets up with Jesse, and I never thought that like I would be rooting for Team Rockets like relationship Jesse and me to each other. Like, oh, I guess James yeah, they is left. Stay they there. lived without him. Yeah, they're like, oh, God, I guess like, I mean, realistic. They're like, oh man, okay, so it's better off for James to stay here. Okay, there, here's the difference between their expanding on their relationship and Ash and Pikachu expanding on their relationship and Pikachu's goodbye mm-hmm. is that this one actually means something. This one stems from something. From an earlier part of James's backstory, mm-hmm. which is this is also one of the few times when backstory actually aids to character development, because before then we haven't had much of any kind of backstory between Jesse and James, except for the fact that they were in a bike gang and for some reason they both also went to that Pokemon Academy. Yeah, I don't know why they only use poison types then. And then yeah, I don't know poison. either. I think we talked about that. Then. Yeah, it, it was a bullshit episode. I hate that episode. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> So the difference between um, this episode and Pikachu's goodbye is that this is one of the first times that we've seen that Jesse and James actually kind of not only do they need each other, they want to be with each other um, because like there's something that for for James, like we see that Jesse's counterpart in Jezebel and mm-hmm. why Jesse accepting James for who he is makes him feel wanted and stronger and makes him feel accepted as a person how much that means to him that's all james wants yeah to be part of someone while yeah. being himself it's weird that he came with the balloon yeah <laughs> i don't know why just he jane and me out left the, the balloon with james <laughs> but it's okay it just made the scene all the more beautiful uh, and then they forgot me out <laughs> which was so funny it's such a last minute great little gag and, and like a standing gag too. Yeah. They always forget me. Out. Yeah, exactly. And then Brock and Nash and Misty all leave, but I, I don't care about them. In this no, episode, that's no, fine. they were they were side characters, and that that's okay because we were expanding on other people's relationship and having stronger characters outside of the main cast of uh, the main trio anyway. Like and it's Jesse it's and James good the emotional, yeah, development. So Nick, uh, how many Voltorbs are you giving this? Four. Episode? Four. <laughs> four Voltorbs. Four. So Nick. Four electrodes. 
four electrodes. So Nick, it has been 50 episodes, and I have not given a episode four Voltorbs. Oh. This is my first four Voltorbs yes! episode. Oh. Oh, man. I really, 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 really enjoyed this episode, and I... And originally, I even thought, like, all right, I'm not going to give it four yet. I want to see how I feel after I talk about it. Mm-hmm. But talking about it, yeah, I really like this episode even more talking about it. Like, it it has. There's, just so there's much going no on. weak points. Yeah. All the gags are hilarious and perfectly timed. There are real human co- connections. It's got everything. And even, like, has it Pokemon has aiding. Yeah, it even has Pokemon aiding in with, like, the character development. Like, it even has them, like, represented them representative of them as people and showing like their strong bond and how that influences them and their actions like and vileplume is a great <laughs> pokemon for jesse Bell. <laughs> yeah the counterpoint to the the doppelganger of jesse would still have a poison pokemon but keep it refined with that grass type yeah and also it grows with her whereas james's pokemon could not oh my god like there's just so Growl much about this episode James's i like purity. yeah this is this is a four Voltorb episode, and I'm I am very much not conflicted at all in giving it a four Voltorb. No, like, not at I all. I love I love this episode. No. I love talking about it. I want to see like a future James where like he's got his shit together. Uh-huh. So one of his Pokemon is an Arcanine. Yeah, is Growlithe the Arcanine? Yeah. It get, and I get um, I don't know if we talked about why Growlithe couldn't go with James, but it, it, he it, he wanted Growlithe to keep an eye on his parents. Right. And it makes sense uh, story-wise because Growlithe is just too noble, noble of a Pokemon to go with Team Rocket Team and all Rocket to have like Weezing as a co Pokemon, right? Um, and also, like it's again, it's just good represent. It's a good representation of what James is leaving behind by going off and leaving on his own, like in a way, Pokemon adventure. Even though he's a villain, like, and that's and that's the thing is that he is still a villain. He's still a bad guy. He is still making a choice to be a bad guy Mm -hmm. but we see why he's making that choice it's because he had shitty parents and this is what happens when you have shitty parents kangaskhan kid (laughs) (laughs) sometimes just okay james's parents are better than them though you know what yeah because they might have tried to keep james and they might have tricked him they might be they never threw him out of a helicopter and then like just couldn't find him even though like that there's only so much area that a three-year-old could run they didn't search the entire world (laughs) <laughs> they said no we know james is in kanto yeah they knew that james had run away by choice so mm-hmm. uh they might they might be terrible people by trying to trick him back but at least they're funny about it too not, <laughs> yeah. and they belong in the not, show on like some god 70s yeah, cartoon god. character yeah they're not and they're not insufferable they're funny and they're not lazy f- either no no. God, I hate their Anything, parents. they're more... Oh, my God. I hate I, the King's Oh, parents. God. The, the King is... Let's stop kid. talking about that. Yeah. I'm just going to get angry this keep, this with keeps this up great re- four-star episode. <laughs> <laughs> we have picked... We have, this, uh, this great episode has brought up, like, all of our most hated episodes. Like, King is God Kid, Pikachu's Goodbye, School of Hard Knocks. Like, f*** those episodes. This those is episodes. what... This, this is what Pokemon should be, man. This is Pokemon Gold. This is Pokemon Quality. This right is, here. This is what a Pokemon show should be. The Pokemon are involved in the plot... The characters have character development. Like, it, everything is there. It expands on the Pokemon world. It, there's stuff in here that, like, the games I wish I had. Like, it's all stuff that should be. So I, I, I like this episode a lot. Four, four Voltorbs or Four Voltorbs. I, I, I'm not going to evolve them. Why would I evolve yeah, them? I, I, That's I, not the best the the rating system. <laughs> because the electrodes are... Okay, now the goal is four electrodes for you, man. <laughs> We gotta they're evolve gonna, those Voltorbs. They're not gonna evolve. They're just Voltorbs. Okay, I'm gonna expand on my rating system just a little bit, just a tap <laughs> it. Uh, four. So a destructed, a self-destructed Voltorb, a single one, is the worst rating I'm gonna give because it's like terrible and it didn't do. Sh- it was like to a ghost type Pokemon they tried to do it to. Uh, Voltorb. That's the standard. Like and. A four four full torp still a really good show. Uh, there's only four full torp and then four electrodes. There are no one star. Ele- there are no one electrodes. Four electrodes is the peak epitome of what an episode could be. 
for me. And this one is just going to be one of your top ranked episodes. Top ranked episodes. Oh no, yeah, for me too. Like this was this was such a good episode. Like it was, it was hilarious. It was good natured. Had good story. Had good plot. Had good character development, which I didn't think I'd be saying. It's got everything. It's got everything. And oh my god, it. It's weird when you have Team Rocket as part of your story, and they're not there to come in as like your weak ass second act structure. You actually have to come up with a story. Did they do the Team Rocket? They did. They did do the Team Rocket anthem because it was beautiful, right? When? When James reunites with Jesse. Oh yeah. Prepare for trouble. That's right. Make oh my god. Double. Yeah. That was actually the part that made me go, oh, <laughs> that's so nice. I'm actually. This is one of my favorite Team Rocket mottos. Team Rocket, uh, when when they're good, they're they are, good. They are good. All right, Nick, you ready to talk about episode number fifty-one? Fifty-one. So near yet so far fetched. Yeah. yeah. How punny of them. Yeah. I mean, that's what like half of the names of episodes is a pun. Uh, yeah, a chance C operation. Yeah, they're pretty bad. Yeah, that's half in you know, four batches. Pokemon isn't the best at naming their episodes. They're not the worst. They're not. The, yeah, at least you like when you see the name of the episode, you know what the episode's about. Yeah, like, <laughs> it could just be episode fifty-one. Yeah, it, they could have named it something weird, but they named it. Well, they did name it something kind of weird. They could have named it the shitty little boy whose name was never revealed. <laughs> Oh my god, they never revealed his name. They never revealed his name. Oh my god. Let's get back to... We'll we'll go back to that at at (laughs) the end. We gotta talk about the rest of the episode. Yep. So the episode opens um, on a, like, really far out shot. And the narrator says they've been walking for a long time, so they're taking a nice little break. Taking a nice little break. And Missy is doing something with her hand. With her one hand. hand, On, like, like, right right above her leg. Yeah, like... Jacking, if you will, her fist up and down on her leg for some reason. I'm like, oh my god, what is Misty doing? As a girl, it's very weird. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I don't know. If she were a boy, it would still be inappropriate. Um, we, we zoom in later, uh, and we see that Misty is just kind of like... Beating her legs. Beating her legs. But why only the but one why at only that the time? one at that time? Yeah, why at that point was And we also one? saw that Psyduck was out. And yeah. why wasn't Misty using that one fist to beat Psyduck? <laughs> I'm so used to the physical abuse <laughs> that I find it odd. And then it's revealed, oh wait, she's too tired to beat Sida, so we'll just give it some good old emotional Verbal abuse. abuse. Yeah, there we go. That's a little bit better. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, and why was Ash looking up Farfetch'd? I don't know. Ash, we start the episode, and after the narrator does his thing, Ash is looking at his Pokedex, and he's like, oh, so that's a Farfetch'd, huh, Brock? Blah, blah, blah. Says, yeah, it is. I think it's because, like, um, I don't know if the narrator says it, but I think the implication is that... Farfetch has been sighted in these yeah, woods. Yeah, exactly, that Farfetch are in this area for some reason. I don't know where the hell they are in Kanto at this point. I have no idea. I'm just so lost where they in are. In Pokemon Yellow, you could catch Farfetch off that long-ass bridge from uh, Lavender Town to uh, Fuchsia City. Could you really? Yeah. I did not know that. I need to download Pokemon Yellow Yeah, if you use Cut DS. on a... Uh, this little batch. Because I never actually played through all of Pokemon Yellow. Oh, Pokemon Yellow's a good one. Yeah, I kind of want to now. So anyway, this episode. Uh, so so the Brock and Ash kind of wander away for some reason. I guess to talk about Farfetch'd. To talk about Farfetch'd or something. And uh, Misty sees Farfetch'd and Farfetch'd doing something kind of cute. Like and being a Farfetch'd. Being like, being far, Farfetch'd, Farfetch'd. He's like twirling his little leak as a baton. Uh, I guess this is a good time to point out that they, um, when he looks at the Pokedex, they, the Pokedex talks about how tasty Farfetch'd is. But so, that's why it's nearly extinct. Yeah. It's easy to forget that in the original, um, in the original series, Pokemon were, like, just, like, animals. So, like, they would eat Farfetch'd. They would eat the Farfetch'd. Magikarp is yeah. seen by Pidgeotto all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Farfetch is among them. And they're, one of the reasons why, I think one of the reasons why they want Farfetch is so that they can eat the thing it's kind of f***ed up to put in a kid's show but whatever oh i didn't get that from the misty from the ash gang no i think that's what they said i i might be wrong or maybe it was just team rocket but i I know team rocket said specific explicitly that they they wanted wanted to eat eat it okay that's still a little 
fucked up to put in a kids show when the like Pokemon are supposed to be your friends and everything. Like I don't imagine Brock hearing that Farfetch'd are nearly extinct, still wanting to eat a Pokemon. Yeah, I would hope not. Anyway, uh, Misty runs after Farfetch because Farfetch goes into the woods. She like collides with this kid, uh, drops her book bag, and the guy like gives her back her book bag. Her exact same looking book bag. Exact same style, exact same color, everything book bag. Uh, and she runs out. Uh, runs away because um, she was like, yeah, this is my Farfetch, whatever. Get lost. And she was like, oh, okay. No. I'll leave now then. Yep. And this is when it's revealed that, like, uh, Misty, that he had taken her her backpack and, and replaced, replaced it, it with, with a bunch of rocks. With a bunch of rocks wrapped in little paper. But also, she told Brock and Misty, or Brock and Ash, I don't know why I keep wanting to say Misty instead of Ash, that she tried to go look for Farfetch'd. Mm. And then Ash and Brock were very... They were. ...upset about they this. They were like, how dare... Are you went to go catch uh, Pokemon without us? I'm like, is she not allowed no to? to? <laughs> like, what the Brock, hell? Brock, you did that in, like, the second episode yeah. you showed up in. Yeah, exactly. You went off and you caused Zubat off screen. But uh, God forbid Missy go... I mean, maybe they're just, like, trying to keep her in check, make sure she's not going out and abusing Pokemon <laughs> and capturing them. <laughs> we only need one abusing. We can't have two. <laughs> exactly. So she's like, oh, shit, my Pokemon are all gone. I had five Pokemon here, and they're gone now. What, like, what the hell? Gotta find that far-fetched kid and get uh, my Pokemon back. And so then they go look for him. Yeah. Well, they get an Officer Jenny to help out. Yeah. And that's when Team Rocket comes in, and they're like, ah, oh, we're gonna get far-fetched. We're gonna get far-fetched to eat! Mm. Because we like far-fetched, and we like doing morally questionable things involving Pokemon. In this case, it's to eat them. Makes sense for a villainous team. Yeah. They find... Uh, the boy. The boy. They find boy. And... <laughs> <laughs> they didn't give him a name. They didn't. Netflix they, literally just says boy. Yeah. They're like, at one... Just boy. Fucking... Alright, whatever. So they find boy. Mm. And he's like, hey, I got all these Pokemon that, like, I'm tired of carrying around with me. I'll give you some of them if you want. I'm tired of raising Pokemon. Like, yeah. that's so insensitive to yeah, say. Like, the far, is. like if the Farfetch'd wasn't in on the plan, can you imagine being a Farfetch'd? I mean, like, oh. Well, one of the reasons why he's stealing Pokemon is because, like, he's like, oh, Farfetch'd is way too weak for me to raise, man. That's why is he stealing weak. Pokemon, though? That's why. He's... Because there's no other but way why, for him to survive. Why is he stealing Pokemon, though? As opposed to what? As opposed to, I don't know, surviving. I don't know. Just, uh, what does stealing Pokemon have to do with surviving? I don't know, man. It's That's... just like, I'm going to take him. <laughs> he does nothing with them. He just has a ball of bags. Of, he a just bag has of a balls? bag of Pokemon. <laughs> he has a bag of balls. He has a Pokemon. ball sack. <laughs> he has a duffel bag <laughs> containing a bunch of Pokeballs that he does nothing with. Yes. He should have been like, when he met Team Rocket, he should have been like, oh, sh you guys are Team Rocket? Hey, I have a bunch of Pokemon. Do you want to, like, buy these? Yeah. I will sell you them. <laughs> That's what you do when you to survive. You steal Pokemon and sell them. Yeah, he's just gonna, like, I'm going to hang on to them. Like, like, what are you doing with them? Yeah, and then, when, and then so they go, they go to the, he's like, let's go to the, the, the river for some reason. Takes him to the river where there just happens to be a boat. He's like, man, I really hope Team Rocket is really stupid to fall for this, which they are. Yeah. And he leaves the, he leaves the bag of balls there. He's like, oh, I forgot something. So he leaves uh, with Far uh, Farfetch staying behind, and Team Rocket's like, hoo hoo, we can steal, steal all this. But then the turns out the boat's rigged because, of course, and uh, Team it's Rocket's sinks. balls just happened to fall out of their pockets and float down the river. That's very lucky that they weren't, like, attached to them in any way. Including Jessie's Lucky Tongue. Which she doesn't have yet in, like, chronological order. I looked it up. Apparently, this episode is out of order for some reason. Like, this episode was supposed to air, I think, at the very soonest, after Princess vs. Princess, which is an episode we haven't seen or reviewed yet. Is it possible that Princess vs. Princess is supposed to be before this? It's possible, but I'm, I'm not sure. Um, we'll have to find out say, if Misty yeah. has a thing in Princess vs. Princess. So Farfetch comes along and steals uh, their Pokemon. Uh, he's got a little boat. He's kind of cute. He just scoops Farfetch'd them up. Farfetch is cute. I like yeah. Farfetch. Farfetch was... for Farfetch. This episode would be a lot lower. Yeah, this uh, the Farfetch made this episode uh, watchable. Um. So yeah. The so the boy the boy 
steals uh, their Pokeballs. Uh-huh. Uh, but, but, then but, they uh, go hide. He goes to hide in his tent, and Psyduck comes out of his Pokeball and wanders away to find Misty, which he does. Yeah. And still, Misty braces him for being an idiot. And I'm uh, like, oh, dude, no, Psyduck found hold on, you. Hold on, hold on. I wanna, I wanna mention like I wrote F- you, Misty, because in one scene, Misty says. Or in the scene, Missy is, like, looking for her Pokemon. Uh-huh. And she says, oh, I miss all my Pokemon. Like, Star You, Star Me, Goldeen, Horsey. And then Ash says, you forgot to mention Psyduck. Oh, I wish I could forget Psyduck. And then Psyduck shows up. Misty is really happy to see Psyduck. And then Psyduck starts just doing its Psyduck thing, as a Psyduck should. And Misty immediately goes back to hating it. Like, come on, Misty. Come on. Stop it! Treat Psyduck one way or the other. Don't do both. It's worse when you do both. Psyduck is so psychologically damaged by this point. It doesn't know what to do. It doesn't know what love is. It does not. It takes Missy's beratement as love. It does. That's so, so messed up. So messed up in every way. And why does the boy scam so convolutedly? I don't Why doesn't he just know. live in a city? Yeah. And you just do a bunch of sleight of hand tricks. Yeah, because that seems to be booth, the kind so. of thing that he does anyway. But instead, he like he like rigs up a boat to like sink and hopes that the pokeballs float out of their pocket. Has just like a backpack that just so happens to look like one other exact backpack. Yeah, he has so many backpacks so that he can just switch them with other backpacks. I guess. Like, does like, he keep why? a backpack of backpacks? Yeah, like what the hell? It's just so convoluted. Like it's. Mm, anyway. Anyway. So, so they they use Psyduck to help mm-hmm. and find find rest. find boy and the rest of the Pokeballs. And Psyduck does a good job. He does. Good he job, does. Psyduck. I'm proud of you. Misty is like bitching at it the whole way, like, ah, you're so stupid, Psyduck. <laughs> you can't find them. Come on, Psyduck, go. What the hell? <laughs> and Psyduck's like, I'm so fucked up, man. I'm trying. It reminds me of Michael Scott from The Office and how he treats Toby of uh, Flenderson. But at least Michael Scott's funny about it. Like, he's so... And he's so consistent with his hatred for Toby Flenderson. He doesn't suddenly, like, like floaty Toby. Boy gives Team Rocket, I guess, like, to make it seem like he's putting it in his part of the deal. When Team Rocket finds Boy, Boy gives Team Rocket, like, a bag full of, of Pokeballs. Mm-hmm. Um, which we later find out was just a bunch of Voltorb, and they explode, and blah. That's and it that's them. the end of Voltorb. No, of, uh, Team, Team Rocket. Yeah. Team Rocket's dead. Why so, doesn't that boy use that bag of Voltorb to, I don't know, break into a bank? I don't know. He's so he's so worried about the fact that he can't battle anyone, but he has a full f***ing bag full of nothing but Voltorb. Like, shit. Like, train one of them if you don't like Psyduck. Uh, Farfetch'd. Or Psyduck. Or Psyduck, whatever. Psyduck, maybe there's some kind of, maybe they're trying to make some kind of, like, correlation between the way this guy treats his duck and the way that Misty treats her duck. This guy treats his duck very well, though. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't... He thinks it's weak and he doesn't want to train it. He's a yeah. bitch with it, but yeah. yeah. So Misty, um, they've got an Officer Jenny with them. Psyduck, they all find Boy. And Boy says, I'm stealing Pokemon because Farfetch is still weak and it has everything to do with it, apparently. And Jenny's like, well, we're going to teach you a lesson by battling you. And I'm like, what? That's... How the law works. Yeah, to arrest him. Like you're a you're a police woman. I mean, she's terrible at her job. Every officer Jenny is the best officer Jenny we've seen is a very grunt, grumpy, grumpy one. Yeah, yeah. but it, you're gonna. Oh my god. Anyway, so they decide instead they're gonna have a Pokemon battle. So Ash sends out his Bulbasaur, which I I don't know if it's a good call or a bad call. Like it's a good call for the case that maybe Ash is trying to boost Farfetch'd in the boy's self esteem. Yeah. And give him the type advantage. Or it's a bad call because Ash is literally trying to teach him a lesson about, hey, let's don't be a dick. Yeah. Which I think is what they were going for. I think they were going for, ha, I'm going to punish you for being so mean and stealing people's Pokemon. So we're going to have a Pokemon battle and I'm just going to beat the shit out of Farfetch'd. <laughs> this is what you get. This is what you get, motherfucker. Don't fuck with me. Yeah, so Bulbasaur is beating the shit out of Farfetch'd. Like, Farfetch is bleeding. Yeah, vine this is, like, one of the few Pokemon we see, like, actual bruises on. Yeah. Like, hardcore. But Farfetch'd pulls through with, uh... 
Yeah, he manages to beat Bubblezor, and this is Ash's sixth loss in the series. It would it could have been a win if he was allowed to send out a second Pokemon. Yeah, but Misty's like, no. She he stole my Pokemon, so I want to get back at him. Oh, with... but I don't have any Pokemon. Ex- well, oh, you, except Psyduck. Psyduck, yeah. So uh, Farfetch comes up and just starts like beating Psyduck in the face with a leak, which doesn't do anything except like make it, Psyduck uh, have a headache, which gives it its psychic which, powers. Yeah. And Missy's like, use disable, and it like, or um, no, it starts to use confusion, and she goes, yeah, migraine attack. Use no, disable. ultimate migraine attack. I think it was, it was like something overly called that. Just like super migraine attack. Use disable. And I'm like, okay, first of all, there's no such attack as migraine attack. Kind be kind of funny if it was. It'd be like a boosting move or something like that. Like a Z move. Yeah. But there's no such thing as migraine attack. Shut the f- up, Misty. <laughs> Second of all, that is not disable. That is damn confusion. That disable should have just disallowed, like, the disable should have taken Farfetch'd sleek and, like, throwing it off into the wood somewhere. <laughs> if it was disable, it would just prevent it from, like, using a move or something. But no, it Can't blasts believe. Farfetch'd back into a tree with the boy. With boy. And then they're like, oh, well, that that sucks. I guess we learned our lesson through mm. violence. Yep. And th- no one presses charges against because them. Because they're all going to get their Pokemon they're back. They're all going to get their Pokemon back, which bullshit. How long has this boy been doing his He game? has a shit ton of Pokeballs, so he's been doing it for a while, Like, now the people have to go back, or he has to go back and find them. That's going to take more time. Yeah, like, think about I'm all the... I'm pressing po- charges. Yeah, think of all the paperwork for Officer Jenny, too. Like, mother... And at this point, it should be a federal crime anyway, so it doesn't matter if they're not going to press charges. <laughs> You're still going to jail, boy. You're still going to jail, mother... And we're like, going to eat you... your farfetch for... It's going to be your farfetch. It's going to be your last meal. And I'm sorry, but if someone came up and stole my cat, I'd be pissed and I'd be pressing charges. I don't care if they give it back. <laughs> Like motherfucker, don't steal my goddamn pet. Now what? What if? What if your cat went missing and they returned it? Yeah, but we know that they were like, okay, it'd be a little. I would think it'd be a little suspicious. They're like, oh yeah, here's your missing cat that I'm returning as a good person. Oh really? Well, I heard that you've been stealing cats and dogs and horses. Like what? <laughs> and horses. So obviously you stole my cat. I'm pressing charges. Also, it doesn't matter if I'm pressing charges or not because this is obviously a federal crime because you're stealing from me. She says Grand Theft Pokemon. Grand Theft Pokemon. That you're under means, arrest. That has to mean that as a federal charge. That means that motherfucker's going to jail. <laughs> or he should be. But instead, we're going to say, ah, just whip him with some vines or a farfetch with the vines. As long as we abuse this farfetch, then he's learned his lesson. Whatever. I mean, he is a boy. He can't go to jail. Take away his farfetch. <laughs> That should be something in the Pokemon world. If you abuse your Pokemon, use it to steal Pokemon, you shouldn't get to have your f***ing Pokemon. Uh, I really don't like the way they resolved this episode, <laughs> if you can't tell. It's just kind of malarkey, man. At, le- at least that Farfetch is pretty dope, though. Yeah, I really like the Farfetched. That Farfetch was sweet. Yeah, the Farfetch was like the best character of this episode, definitely. So based on that rant force, how many uh, Voltorbs are you giving it? Mm. Well, the really the biggest... I mean, the pacing in this episode really wasn't very good. Mm-hmm. And I didn't care for the story, but there's not enough about it, about it that I hated to make me want to give it a one. So I'm giving it a one and a half Voltorbs. Oh, okay. um, And mostly for the, for the Farfetch'd as well. And I... I mean, they it was bullshit. I understand the message they were trying to give with, like the farfetch trying to prove itself because originally he was like this thing's too weak to the battle and the farfetch was no i'm not i can battle so the farfetch was trying to prove itself so the it had that going for it i guess but man it still didn't i i just really didn't like the way that they wrapped up this episode because it, it didn't make any sense to me it was all too convenient. Yeah, it was all too convenient. It was too much just like the only thing we're really going to really do to punish him is punish his farfetch by beating the crap out of it. So. But they can just heal the farfetch at the Pokemon Center. That is true, but he's that kid is still not really learning his lesson, though, if you think about it. Because now he's free to just go off and steal other people's Pokemon. Well, no, no, no. He was... He... he okay. First of all, I'm giving this a two. A two? Because I agree with, like... the. The pacing was fine, and the story was there. Like, it was the story, but nothing strong. Um, yeah. The the I'm giving it half of a Voltor more, because the whole thing that was uh, supposedly stopping him was the fact that Vol- that Farfetch was too weak. Uh-huh. 
Um, and with the Farfetch'd showing itself against the one Pokemon, that should show him that, hey, Farfetch can handle itself. Right. So now he won't be stealing Pokemon. I still think that was kind of just an excuse he was giving, but... I mean, I'll, I'll there's allow no, it. There's yeah. no way to, to show that it's more than an excuse or less than an excuse. Which is why like, some Within judicial minutes. action should be... Maybe the community guy. Like, he needs, yeah, like he needs at least community service or something, man. You know that because otherwise I would have given it a two, maybe even a two and a half because it's not. Again, it's not really like an unwatchable episode or anything. Mm-hmm. But that's the other thing. It's not unwatchable. At oh all. no, like, no. The, I didn't. I didn't take that many notes on it. Yeah. The only parts that made me angry were Misty and Farfetch, Misty Psyduck. and Psyduck, really. Yeah. Um, yeah. Everything else was just like. Ugh. Yeah. Exactly. So, that episode, is that, do you have anything else for this episode? No, that's it. Yeah. It, it's, for the most part, it's just kind of there. It got on my bad side because of the way it wraps up, like I said, but, whatever. Moving on. This nurse, this Officer Wendy's. Jenny. Officer Jenny, whatever. Officer Wendy? <laughs> officer, I, I, no, I don't know. <laughs> this Officer Jenny just helps, upholds the tradition of being terrible at her job, so. That is true, too. Pardon. So... That would have been weird if Boy was judicially punished, because that would mean that Officer Jenny, for once, did her job. Yeah, that's true. 